Hey, it's Chris. One knock that people have had against the iPad lineup, especially the pros, has traditionally been, where are the great apps that can take advantage of this unique and powerful hardware? Well, they're here. Apple just announced that Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro are coming to the iPad. And in this video, I wanna talk about what that means for iPad users and for people in the Apple ecosystem. One thing we know right off the bat is that Apple is listening to customers. Name a YouTuber out there that talks about Apple stuff that hasn't been asking for pro apps to make their way to the iPad lineup. I've been among those people, and I'm glad that Apple didn't just rush something out the door. Good things do take time, and this is a really good thing. So it's great to confirm that Apple's listening to customers, but it's also crazy to think about they launched this thing ahead of WWDC. I think that tells us a little bit about what we can expect at WWDC as well, because this is a pretty big announcement. What we also know from this announcement, Apple bringing Final Cut and Logic to the iPad, is that Apple is serious about making the iPad a powerhouse, giving people a way in-house from Apple to take advantage of that really powerful hardware and the chips. Now, in order to take advantage of these pro apps, you are gonna need an iPad that has at least the M1 chip, but I think it's really cool that Apple isn't limiting this to the latest chip. That means an iPad Air 5 that starts at $600 is gonna be able to run these really professional pro apps. Now, that might not be the best experience, you know, you're gonna need a lot of space on your iPad and you can get a lot of extra space on an iPad Pro, you get a better screen and better camera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But hey, it's not limited to only the best iPad out there. Another thing I think this announcement makes crystal clear is that the benefits of the Apple ecosystem, being in the Apple ecosystem, adding more devices and services to your setup in the Apple ecosystem, continue to compound over time. So using Final Cut Pro, using Logic on the iPad all alone is gonna be a great experience, very powerful, but used in conjunction with a Mac or an iPhone or other Apple devices, then it's just gonna be all the better. The point being here, I think this reinforces what we've known for a while, that having an iPad on its own is great, having a Mac on its own is great. Having both is the best way to get the absolute most out of the ecosystem, even though it's not necessary. So when we talk about the ecosystem, being able to start a project in Final Cut Pro on your iPad and then export that to finish over on the Mac, that's pretty cool, but it doesn't just end there. You know, Apple has the studio display, they've got the Pro Display XDR, and you can use these apps on the iPad with those displays. But that's great. I feel like we're really starting to see the iPad come into its own now because yes, it's unique with the Apple Pencil, the multi-touch interface, but you can use the keyboard, you can use the external display, and those are meaningful as time goes on. When I say this lets us know that Apple is serious about turning the iPad into a powerhouse, you look at the different apps that they offer. For Apple to bring their two most powerful creative apps, Logic and Final Cut, to the iPad. To me, that signals that there's nothing that's gonna be off limits to iPads, to iPad users, but it's just a matter of time building out the landscape because of course, the Mac side of things has been building out for years and years and years before iPads were even around, but it's coming. And that means not just shot for shot remakes of things, but also actual innovation because there's a lot of new features here that are iPad first. Using the iPad is always going to be different than a Mac. Of course, you can use the magic keyboard and type and you have the pointer interface like you do on the Mac, but because of the multi-touch interface and because of the Apple Pencil, you feel a little bit closer to the content that you're manipulating. And that's gonna be all the more true when you're using Final Cut Pro and you're using Logic. You're gonna feel like you're manipulating the actual footage or the actual sound files more so than if you're using a tool as an in-between, you know, like a mouse pointer or a keyboard. You know, I'm already looking forward to using my Paperlike 2.1, the newest version, the Swiss Paperlike with these new apps. The Apple Pencil is already an amazing tool. I got the Paperlike grip on here as well, but the new Paperlike has better visibility and clarity when you're using it. Got that papery feel and stroke resistance. Got the newer, better nano dots with the expert back development process. Lots of reasons to check it out, which I definitely recommend doing. It's linked up down in the description. So you'll notice on the right side of Final Cut here on the iPad, there's a new jog wheel. That doesn't exist on the Mac. And it's a fun, and it's gonna be a fun new way to navigate your footage and to precisely edit things and you're actually touching the interface and it's a different experience. I think more intuitive, it feels more natural. Though I haven't used it, that's what I'm surmising and I can't wait to get my hands on it, literally, so that I can check that out. And then on top of that, being able to use the Apple Pencil to draw or to write right on the frames and then have that animate with this live drawing feature, 
you know, using the Apple Pencil to do that is not something that you can do on the Mac side of things. So there's some clear, distinct advantages to being able to use the iPad, to be an iPad user. I think for the first time in a long time, it feels like there's some really distinct advantages for being an iPad user versus the Mac side of things. Maybe we'll start seeing some of that conversation flip. You know, for Logic, you're able to actually use the Apple Pencil to draw things in that you weren't able to do before. And there's even a new beat breaker function, which is just for Logic on the iPad interface. And that's probably gonna end up being the standout feature actually from this release for iPad users, people who are using Logic on the iPad. But by swiping and pinching, you can radically reshape what that waveform is gonna end up looking like. And that's not something that you can do on the Mac side of things. So this is unique, novel, iPad first stuff. Pretty exciting. You know, jumping back to Final Cut Pro, aside from features that video editors will be excited about, like multi-cam editing, which I'm really excited about, and aside from the auto crop feature, which is necessary, useful these days, aside from some effects that are built in, like titles and transitions, etc., I think a huge implication here that people are gonna be sleeping on, but is like a superpower, now that Final Cut Pro is here, is the pro camera mode and being able to shoot edit and publish, like I've talked about for a long time, but in a really professional and cool way, great workflow on the iPad with Final Cut Pro. Because now you can shoot ProRes footage, which looks amazing on the iPhone, by the way, so good, but no one ever uses it because the bottleneck was always importing it into your Mac. Those files were so big, which is why they look so good, but no one could use them practically, basically. Shoot it with manual controls, in ProRes and then be able to drop it right into your Final Cut Pro project, that is amazing. With the release of this and with so many people being content creators these days, because basically everyone is. If you're a student, if you run a small business, if you're actually like a pro YouTuber or whatever you are, I mean musician, it doesn't matter what you do, you're creating content these days. To be able to shoot on the iPad in amazing quality, and not have to export it anywhere, it just drops into Final Cut Pro with no import, that's a huge time saver. And honestly, that's a big unlock. Depending on the quality, I can't wait to try it out. I think that's a workflow that could become very popular and could break this notion that you know certain YouTubers have put out there that you're not supposed to use the iPad as a camera. Well, especially in indoor settings, I think we should be using iPad as a camera, especially with this deep integration to Final Cut. Something else to take note of is that plugins are coming for both Logic and for Final Cut. So one thing that's always kind of held the iPad back, I think in different ways. Let's take Chrome for instance. Chrome is a browser that a lot of people use on the Mac, but they don't over on the iPad because you just can't make use of all those useful plugins. Well, now that we have Final Cut Pro and Logic coming to the iPad, on the Mac side of things, there's such a huge library of plugins that people use, they make use of. So these apps are great by themselves, but the plugins really make it worth it for a lot of professionals out there. And if those didn't come to the iPad, these really wouldn't be up to par. So the fact that both of these apps are gonna be open to developers to develop and bring their plugins to the iPad, I think is a huge, huge, huge unlock that is really gonna let these push the limits of what you could actually do on the iPad. Now, the pricing is interesting here because these are going to be subscription offerings. And I saw a lot of people complaining about that on Twitter. And honestly, if you're complaining about a $5 a month subscription, when the Mac version of Final Cut, this pro app, costs $300, you know, it would take you 60 months to hit that on the subscription. You know, this probably isn't the software for you in the first place then. Because for a professional, like somebody who uses this for their job to make money, you're gonna make a whole lot more than $5, you know, per month using this software. So it's almost like free to a professional. Honestly, I get subscription fatigue. I don't like having subscriptions tied to every little app, but this isn't just a little app. This is a major app. And $5 a month for this pro software, it really honestly doesn't bother me at all. So those are my thoughts. And yes, I will have an actual review of how this works coming out soon. So stay tuned, get subscribed for that. Lots of great content coming in the meantime. Don't forget to check out the productivity course if you wanna learn how to get more done with less burnout, be more efficient in the Apple ecosystem. I'll link it up down below. It's called Learning to Be Productive. Check out our newsletter as well. Comes out on Fridays, lots of stuff you don't wanna miss. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later.